Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. If you've ever thought about building a project like this, or you're just curious what it's like to live in a greenhouse, here I let you in on the reality, the wonderful, the surprising, and the not so fun. Over the years it took to design and build my project, I lived for two years in an eight by eight foot storage room without windows to the outside, and then two years in an eight by 24 foot travel trailer that was cold and damp through the winters. I often dreamed about being back in a beautiful home and being able to have the doors and windows of the house open to the greenhouse most of the year. Although the greenhouse was standing this time last year, the house was still under construction. This is my first summer living in the house inside the greenhouse, so I'm still learning about the reality. Just as in my dream, most days and nights, the doors and the windows are open to the greenhouse. So far, the heat has not been unbearable, and I've only used the air conditioning a few times. During construction, however, we didn't put in the underground air tubes or makeup air tubes, and that has turned out to be a mistake. I've had to leave the doors on each end of the greenhouse open to have that makeup air, meaning there's been easy access for more wildlife than I would like. There are now barriers to the deer, but smaller critters are able to get in through the cargo net I've had to chase chipmunks out of the garden, and there is a mouse that is coming into the house. And as I showed last episode, I'm also being invaded by little green frogs. So come along today as I continue to learn how to garden and live inside a greenhouse. I'm going to hang a couple more sunshades, but look what was living under the shade that arrived earlier this week. Two frogs. They may be tiny, but I'm startled every time one unexpectedly jumps out. My greenhouse's panels are twin-walled polycarbonate, not glass, and I've used a light diffusing material on the south-facing roof. So although it's bright inside, it is not like being under a magnifying glass. Still, it can be too bright in the living room where I work at my day job and the sitting area in the evening. Strategically placed shades have helped a lot. I'd seen a mouse in the greenhouse a few months ago, but imagine my surprise when I saw it run through the living room while I was on a call for work. This means war. I chased it back into the bedroom and closed that room off, so its only exit was this door. Although I didn't get its exit on camera, I know it has gone out because so far it has managed to eat the bait in the trap without getting caught. I've ordered a screen for this door. I ran out of good weather last year to stain the handrail so I really want to get it done this year. But after a year of rain and sun, the surface is rough and needs sanding. Then to brush off the dust, cobwebs, and caterpillar cocoons. The hard part was deciding what color. I couldn't decide between the same black as the rails, or purple from the house doors, or gold from the house siding. So I made a poll on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook with the results at the end of this video. I had to go to Seattle about 90 miles away, but traffic can be so bad that it can take three hours during rush hour, or half that time if I travel early morning. 
got back to the ferry dock in time to capture this beautiful example of the marine layer and the first ferry of the morning returning to the dock. There are many challenges to living on a small island with limited ferry service, but I still love this view coming home and the transition from city time to the pace of island time. Another frog in the house plant again. I moved it to the greenhouse until the frog jumped out. This island is almost the same latitude as England with temperatures and rainfall to make outdoor growing relatively easy. And I've had beautiful gardens and ponds at other houses. But this is my first greenhouse and my first citrus trees. And I'm having a hard time adjusting to watering and fertilizing requirements. I've had so much trouble with this Myers lemon that I finally took pictures to my favorite local nursery for diagnosis. I love this combination and may try something like it next year. This time of year, between the tourists and folks coming up to use their weekend home, the ferry line can become a two or three boat wait. So I walked on and used the car parked on the mainland. I have a small cart for my groceries and stuff, but there are wheelbarrows available to cart stuff across on the ferry. Two lanes unload. And then it's a stampede of walkers. The nursery recommended a citrus blend fertilizer granule rather than the state which I had been using previously. I applied this at the rate on the box and marked on my calendar to be sure to stay on a regular schedule for the rest of the season. This hose is fed from the pool. giving the trees their deep watering. Then mixed up a batch of liquid fertilizer. And applied to the flowers around the sitting area. I love cucumbers and harvested my second mini baby white today. It was perfect. I gave the poll 24 hours and the results were decisive. One choice received more than double the other two put together. Gold. 
Got the first coat on in the evening after the sun was behind the greenhouse. The next morning I got the second coat on before the sun topped the trees, but not before finishing the black touch up. And there you have it, a busy week, but I made time to have fun and finished the stair railing that I ran out of time last fall. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends, and come back next time when I try to keep the critters out of the house.